So I'm Mr. Rathjen, Andrew Rathjen, and today I will be talking about Pursuit of Happiness and where you can find it. So I graduated from Los Altos High School in 2005. I started working here about two years ago, and I've been loving it ever since. The main reason we're talking today oh, is about happiness. So these are the four main chemicals that actually induce happiness within you. Serotonin, endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin. Pretty boring stuff, a lot of hard science. That's not my jam. But what is interesting is the erotic treadmill. This is something that affects every single person in this room. You've all had it, you've all dealt with it every day of your life, but you might not have known what it was. What it is, is you have a constant state of happiness, always, level. Every single person, no matter what or who you are, you always have a constant state of happiness. What happens though is say, you get a good grade on test, that happiness goes up. But, like always, it returns shortly after. Same thing with you get in a fight with your parents, goes down, you got grounded, not happy. But, after a day or two, returns back to happiness. More things can happen. Hit the lottery, that's probably gonna be a lot higher, right? Or, end up having a disease or a car accident or something, get hurt. But, like always, you return to happiness. So, the main point of my story is about me and my pursuit for happiness and where I found it. So, we're gonna start with this. The mind is its own place and in itself can make heaven of hell and hell of heaven. This is from uh, Paradise Lost, John Milton. A bunch of your English uh, teachers probably really like this book and probably recommend it. It's pretty good, a little dry, but good points. The reason I bring this quote up is because right after Los Altos High School, I graduated and went to University of Colorado. Last year was ranked happiest city in America. Also last year, ranked 49th of the most beautiful colleges in America. Also on there, ranked seventh for partying. Probably I did a little too much of that. But when I got here, I was miserable. I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I'd been going to school my whole life, like most of you, since I can even remember. Every year going to school, summer, grind in, grind out but I wasn't happy. I was studying architecture here. Always loved art, but when I got there, I wasn't fulfilled. I was lost and I was miserable. And I had no choice. I wanted to do something else and I couldn't figure out what it was. I ended up leaving Colorado after one year, searching, trying to find what would make me happy. And the one thing that has always made me proud and happy is being an American. And always, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness is what's key. So what I decided to do is join the military. Look how happy I am. Sergeant Rathjen, you never saw him that happy. If you saw me coming, you were going to get yelled at real, real bad. So, joined the military. Awesome time. Got to go all over the world. I actually got to be a geospatial intelligence analyst. Doesn't make much sense. I also did ground movement target indication. But what does that mean? I was a spy for the US government. I had a TSSEI clearance. That's the highest clearance the US government can give. That's the same level of the president. The FBI had to investigate my friends, my family. They came to my house, they talked to my mom, they talked to my dad. They wanted to know who I was and if I was gonna ever reveal the secrets that our government had. I was really good at my job. This was my workspace. This is what is considered a skiff. It is a building that is a safe. There are no windows, most of the time it's underground. My first duty location, I was in Korea. I spent about a year underground, four stories in a mountain, fighting communism. So much fun. If you think your eyes hurt after reading a book, try to be in this darkness and only looking at computer screens for 12 to 14 hours a day, four days on, three days off. There was about a year there that I did not get to see the sun. I got into work when it was uh, just coming up, Stay 12 hours inside, no windows, get out when it was already dark. That will mess with your head. So some of the stuff I was working on, this is geospatial intelligence. This coming off the U2 spy satellite, uh, Global Hawk Reaper, all those, got to work with them all. I was also a part of multiple strikes on the enemy. I worked with the UAVs nonstop, doing route clearing, raids with special forces, ingress, egress routes, and also planning for high value target. 
Next thing I was doing was ground movement target indication. Looks pretty boring, it was. All I did every day was just stare at dots. I ended up getting the nickname Neo because all I would do is stare at dots and I could dis discern between a car, a motorcycle, plane, anything, just by a dot. How fast it was going, where it was going, I could determine it all. I was really, really good at my job. And there's a problem with that. A flash of fear makes you extra vigilant for additional threats. You look at the world through a filter that interprets ambiguous events as possible dangers. A flash of danger towards someone raises a filter through which you see everything the offending person says or does as further insult or transgression. The reason I bring this up is when I went in the military, I was excited to be part of something bigger. I wanted to help my country. I felt like I needed to. But after eight years of fighting and seven wars that I was involved in, I was mad. I was angry. All I was doing was putting hate and aggression out in the world. I wasn't helping, I was hurting. And it continued to play on my head. Why was I doing this if it was still not making me happy? Then came along BAE Systems. Most of you guys probably have never heard of this place. We have Lockheed Martin, most of you guys have heard that. Boeing, they make almost every plane you've probably been on. And Raytheon. The reason why you probably haven't heard of BAE Systems is because it's an intelligence group. They only do, they mainly specifically deal with intelligence, intelligence gathering. These guys were gonna offer me $200,000 annually, every year. And if you know anything about teacher pay, that's a lot more. But why did I, why am I here and not at BAE Systems? The money would have been great, right? Happiness, you can, you can buy happiness with money, but only to a certain point. At about $80,000 that dips, no, because that is at the moment where you don't have to worry about rent, you don't have to worry about clothes, you don't have to worry about food. But other than that, no level of happiness. After $200,000, no happiness comes from money. It's baseline, because you can't buy anything that fills a hole. So I was sitting there, I was gonna get a lot of money, do a job that I'm great at, that people said was important, but it wasn't gonna make me happy. So what happened? Empathy, one of the most powerful things our species has, feeling what other peoples feel. And, lucky enough, camp diversity. While I was in the military, my lovely mother was the, your guys' assistant principal. She would ask me to come help volunteer because she knew I was upset about what I was doing in the military and that I was good at it, but it didn't make me feel whole. So I started volunteering, I'd take time out from mission, I would take leave, come down here and work with kids. And it was there that I finally felt complete, that I felt like I was actually helping the world. And I wasn't hurting anyone, I was making people feel better. I wasn't putting aggression into the world, I was making people happy. And then, this. Both Theseus, this guy is pretty crazy. This dude was a consul of what was the former Rome and the empire. He was one of the most powerful people on the planet. He was ungodly rich. He had a powerful family. His two sons were commanders in the former Roman empire. But what happened? He got arrested for treason, imprisoned, all his fortune taken, all his power taken, and he was told he was gonna be killed within one year. That would pretty much bum you out, right? Not a good way to start your day. And this guy, very popular in philosophy, destitute, crying, wailing, so upset that his life had turned so poorly. But during that time, hydraulic Ted Mill, being super powerful, super rich, being told you're going to die, not a good set. But eventually returned to his happiness resting point by realizing that nothing is miserable unless you think so. And on the other hand, nothing brings you happiness until, unless you are content. Through this system, he realized that no matter what in his life, it was his view of it that would give him either power and strength and happiness or make him mad. You can go through a day where you get in an argument with your parents, makes you miserable, super upset. When you leave that area, you might encounter another person and still be upset about that, and then you get mad at them. 
because everything's going on. But you need to be able to stop, take a break, take a step back, and realize that you control your emotions. You won't ever be able to control the world around you, but you can control how you view the world. What we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday, and our present thoughts build our life of tomorrow. Our life is a creation of our own mind. Within you, you have the power to be happy or sad, angry or content. It's all how you view the world. If you get cut off driving to school, you don't get angry, but what, what determined that person to do that thing? Are, did they get in a fight with their spouse earlier today? Are they late for an important meeting? Did their kid just throw up in the back seat of their car? You don't know. So you can either choose to be angry about that or choose to let that go and realize that life's tough, things are going to go bad, things are going to go good, but how you react to them is how you change the world you're in. And I will leave you with this. Events in the world affect us only through our interpretations of them. So if we can control our interpretations, we can control our world. You guys have the power and you have the ability right now to change the world around you. And you can do that starting right now by taking a second every day, center yourself and realize that nothing is permanent. Everything will come and go as it pleases, but you are the one thing that matters and the one thing that can change everything else. Thank you.